I used to think that marketing was a nice to have, a fluffy part of the business where creative people would come up with cute fluffy ideas to try to make the business stand out. And then I woke up and smelt the roses. Marketing is integral in just about every part of our lives. When we're looking for a partner, we're marketing ourselves. When we're dealing with our children, we're marketing the options we want them to take. When we're getting dressed in front of the mirror, we're even marketing our perception and our belief in ourselves. Whoa, getting deep. Peter Drucker, the well-known management consultant, educator, and author, once said that business has only two main functions, marketing and innovation. And thankfully, the relatively new world of digital marketing has opened up a Pandora's box of opportunities for aspiring digital marketers. Work from home digital marketing jobs are widely available. The digital marketing freelance industry is booming and starting an online digital marketing business has never been easier. In this video, what are the different types of digital marketing so that you can immerse yourself and love work at home? Check it out. What's up guys, it is Rowan here from loveworkathome.com where we help you find freedom and work-life balance by sharing information on making extra side income as you can see by the pig there, finding a work from home job and starting an online business if that sounds good, hit subscribe and smack that bell. Okay, now, what are the different types of digital marketing? Okay, first cab off the rank, number one is social media marketing also known as SMM. This is where you use social media, believe it or not, such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, TikTok, etc, etc, to promote a business, sell a product, engage with potential customers, and of course, grow brand loyalty. While these channels can be used to build a following organically, which takes a bit of extra time, most of them, if not all of them, can also be used for paid advertising, which is a whole new skill set, and I'll get to that soon. Now, as a social media marketer, you might work out which platforms to use, uh, what types of posts to post, the posting frequency, create posts or work with the creatives who will create the posts for you, um, check the platform's analytics and adjust your approach amongst other things. Number two is Email marketing, which is commonly known to have the best return on investment. I like comparing email marketing to dating someone. In the first exchange, you ask for their number. In email marketing, you ask for their email address in exchange for something like a free newsletter or digital product. Then you get to know each other through text. In email marketing, you email them interesting, valuable content that helps them solve a problem. And then maybe, just maybe, if you charm them enough, they'll be willing to take it to the next level. In email marketing, you score when they buy your product. As an email marketer, you might set up email templates, send regular broadcast emails, plan and execute campaigns, set up email funnels with triggers, review conversion rates, and of course, adjust the approach to name a few tasks. Number three is content marketing, and it's one of the biggest functions of love work at home. In fact, you're watching content marketing right now. Content can include videos, audios, photos, textbooks, eBooks, blogs, Oh, you name it. The main aim of content marketing is to pique someone's interest, then solve a problem of theirs which will get their attention, and then you start growing a relationship built on trust. As a content marketer, you might create and manage campaigns on social, blog, email, etc. Create lead magnets, uh, which goes back to our dating scene where we were trying to get their phone number, you might remember, aka email address. Uh, manage a content production team, which could be mainly freelancers, might be, might not be. And again, checking your analytics and adjusting your approach to name a few. Number four is search engine optimization. Now, strangely, if you are a search engine optimizer or a search engine optimization specialist, they call you an SEO. I don't know why. What is SEO? Let's say you have a new website for your company that sells dog biscuits. If someone searches for buy dog biscuits online, then something like this might show up and you want to be at the top of the organic results here. So to get to the top of those organic rankings, an SEO might do what's called on-page and off-page op optimization on landing and content pages so that, as I said, search engines can find the website more easily and rank it near the top. Uh, also performing keyword research, plan content strategies, undertake link building campaigns, 
and of course you'll track and optimize amongst many other tasks. Number five is pay-per-click or PPC. This is when a business posts an ad on Google via Google AdSense or maybe on a social media platform in an effort to drive traffic to a sales page. Now, when someone is searching around or looking on the social media platform and clicks on that ad, then the business needs to pay uh, Google or the, the platform for that ad, regardless of whether someone makes a, um, makes a purchase or not. Going back to our dog biscuit example, using SEO, you're trying to rank in the organic search results, which are shown here after the ones that say ad. But using PPC, you're paying to be shown either up here or where these ads are. And your ads will show whenever someone searches for the keywords that you've selected to bid for. Now, as a PPC specialist, you might create and plan a number of PPC campaigns to drive traffic to a website or landing page. Also write engaging copy for adverts plus proofread the ads to ensure they are correct and appeal to the target market. Also monitor and analyze existing campaigns and make recommendations on how to improve them and present the data and reports to show how many bucket loads of cash you've made them amongst many other tasks. Number six is native advertising. At the bottom of an article and often on news sites, you'll sometimes find a number of related articles or sponsored content as it says there. These are ads and they're often designed in such a way as to hook people, appeal to their emotions and are typically called clickbait. For example, she pours half a litre of coke in the toilet. What happens then is really bizarre! Exclamation mark. Green screen photos that will change movies for you forever. <gasps> These are becoming more and more important as people are installing ad blockers so your typical banner ads won't show up. And this is why Business Insider claims that native ads will drive 74% of all ad revenue by 2021. Well, I wonder if that's happened by now. Maybe it has. Anyway, as a native ad specialist, you might plan, create and manage campaigns on native platforms, manage native advertising budgets, collaborate with content writing teams and other marketing pros, and become a pro yourself at plat platforms such as Outbrain and Taboola. I hope you got something out of that. If there's anyone you know who might benefit from this content marketing, hey, hey, well, let's see what I did there, then by all means, please share it with them. Otherwise, be sure to hit this subscribe button if you're not already a, a subscriber. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Radio, bye.